again, in this class, we are more concerned with so-called technical ceramics. Technical ceramics. And uh, technical ceramics, some of them, we call them structural ceramics. For structural ceramics, quite often, we utilize their what types of property? Mechanical property, structural ceramics for mechanical property. I'm giving a table, a big table, but let's go through them one one line by another. The first ones, some ceramics, we want to use them for their, read to yourself, high harness. Some of the ceramics, we use them specifically for their high harness, and we use them for what purpose? Cutting, grinding, polishing, or body armor. Okay, the material I list them some here. CBN for so-called cubic boron nitride. Repeat with me quietly yourself. Cubic boron nitride. Okay, it's boron and nitrogen. Or B4C boron carbide. Or silicon carbide. Or silicon nitride. Or Tungsten carbide. The list go on and on and on. But for all these material, quite often we utilize their one mechanical property. Uh, probably more, but I'm emphasizing one. So called high harness. Okay, I'm showing one example, a picture of an example. What is this? It's a bag of a soldier or dummy soldier, and this piece can be a so called armor, bulletproof vest or helmet, bulletproof helmet. And quite often, nowadays, the armor is a composite, but in the so-called striking face, the face that is going to f face the bullet first will be ceramics. Why? Because it is very, very hard. Okay. And I'm showing the second one. Mechanical engineer, what are these? The cutting tools, put it, you put it on a machine and when it rotates, these types of bits cut into whatever material, could be copper, could be steel, could be hardened steel, Martin side hardened steel, very, very hard steel. How do you cut them? You are going to use something harder than those hardened steel, and those harder material could be diamond, but sometimes diamond doesn't work. People have to use some other material like silicon nitride, tungsten carbide, or cubic boron nitride. Very, very hard material. Hardest only next to diamond. And people made them into these shapes, mounted onto your tool, and use them to fast machine cast iron or many other material, hardened steel, which are very, very hard. Make sense? So these, you say, okay. I can machine copper, aluminum with steel. To machine steel, I can use so-called tool steel. And then what material am I going to shape my tool steel? Hardened tool steel. Well, you have to use something harder, which is diamond or something like these type of ceramics. Make sense? And the, the reason the people move initially from like nitride to carbide and then to cubic boron nitride, the harder your material, your two can last longer or shorter. The harder your material two can last longer, and quite often your machining speed can go fa faster or slower. Faster, your machining speed can go faster, your productivity goes which way? Higher, right? If you're going to machine cast iron, if your tool is soft, you can only go so fast. Make sense? Productivity depends heavily on hard material. And then I'm showing what? Mechanical engineer? Drill bit, right? Quite often drill bit, most cases the drill bit the inside is a hardened steel, but quite often to make it even more well resistant, you sometimes find this gold color. What is that? Gold color. Any any metal is goldish. Well you said gold is goldish, but are you going to apply gold onto your drill bit? or copper on your drill bit. No, why? Doesn't have, it's too soft. So what essentially people put on here, this goldish color is actually coming from a ceramic called titanium nitride or some other types of coating material, ceramic, all ceramic. Why? To make the drill bit 
the harness maintained so that it lasts longer. I can drill faster. Make sense? And then I'm showing all these. What are all these? For mechanical engineer. These are sanding wheel, sanding paper, all of them. And quite often the paper is not the one that does the job. It is what? It's a embed embedded uh, particles which are often silicon carbide, could also be tungsten carbide, embedded well into the wheel, into the paper, into the pad or diamond that does the cutting, grinding, so that you can make the material what? Typically metal part what? what? Smoother, right? Reach certain roughness that you specify for certain friction or whatever application. Make sense? So all these material we are using their property of high harness. But on the other hand, for some other cases, we are using ceramics for their read to yourself low harness for lubrications for fillers okay the material that are listed here are graphite hard or soft graphite soft right you can use graphite as lubricant believe it or not you can also use some other material like talc soft or moly sulfide moly disulfide which i am showing one thing here you saw this product, it says MOS2, moly disulfide, what? Dry film lubricant, which means the material, this moly disulfide is hard or soft? Soft lubricant. It, when you add it there, it helps the material to slip past one another. So you see, some ceramics are very hard, some ceramics are very soft, very, very soft, very, very soft. Okay. Okay, let me. Okay, what I'm showing here, these two. I'm showing a types of so-called ferro. What types of material if you have to get black? <laughs> graphite, graphite ferro, and graphite is hard or soft. Soft. And people put graphite ferro, or can you can put it around a glass tube or a ceramic tube, and then when you tighten, the graphite would what form the seal because graphite is very soft and self lubricating. When you tighten it, it can seal onto a brittle material. Make sense? If I have passed a glass tube through this hole. If I use a metal ferro, when I tighten, that metal can easily what? Crack the glass tube. But if I seal the glass tube with the graphite or sometimes polymer, but graphite can handle higher temperature than polymer. Make sense? So if I want some seal at 450 degrees C, 500, I can only use graphite. I can use graphite. Make sense? To form the seal around a brittle material. Make sense? So these material we are using the so-called low harness, okay? And then some material, ceramic material, most of them we know most ceramics are brittle, low toughness, right? Most of these, these are coatings or this one, if you hammer it, it's going to crack. But some of them, ceramics, they have higher, I would only say not high, but higher, higher than typical ceramics higher toughness. They can be used for bearings, engine part. Here I'm showing a ceramic called the max face, titanium silicon carbide, TI3312, titanium silicon carbide. This material, people can put them onto a machine, lace, for example, and put your tool ceramic to harder ceramic and start to machine it pretty fast. Typical ceramics, you cannot do it easily because it tends to crack. But this material, titanium silicon carbide, can have decent toughness that allows you to do machining. Make sense? Or some other material, silicon nitride, or toughened the conia. What I'm showing here are for mechanical engineer bearings, ball bearing, all types. But when you look at his, what is this material? 
that typically it is not a as you look at it does it look like metal at least the, these no right these are the conia toughened the conia ball bearing ceramic ball bearing and there are other bearing made of silicon nitride believe it or not they are high-end bearing for special application that allows the bearing to go extremely high revolution we are talking about hundreds of thousands per rpm hundreds of thousands rpm it's really 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 fast why because they don't soften as much as metal make sense yeah we stand higher temperature and the friction coefficient of friction is very very low make sense so for only for special applications, you can imagine these are quite often much more expensive than many typical metal bearings. But you use them for special application that is very, very demanding. Make sense? Okay. And for some ceramics, people use them for the high modulus. Here at least the carbon or silicon carbide fibers. What are these? these are fibers you put it around a wand right you see that it's like a a a thread on cloth or something you wind it up and then people can make this fiber into so-called composite do you see this is fiber but embedded with something else can be ceramics silicon or can be other polymers make sense People make them into a composite, and where do people use them? Well, people use them if you see for jet engine purpose or for some very high end aerospace properties. That's, I would say, a quandary, but it's very, very tough. Very, very tough, right? For engine part, companies such as GE or some other company they are trying aggressively for many many years now finally that starting to put some CMC ceramic matrix composite reinforced by ceramic fiber could be carbon and maybe silicon carbide fiber in the into the engine part the advantage is very obvious typical engine part made out of so-called super alloy the density is much much higher double triple of ceramics the melting point is lower than these type of ceramics that's a driving force if you can somehow get the engine not all of them but at least some part of it replace the metal with ceramics the weight goes down the combusting temperature maybe go up a little bit for mechanical engineer combustion temperature goes up weight goes down that helps my jet engine efficiency right make my airplane go faster make sense so that's kind of a fundamental a lot of these technical application quite often are limited by some types of material that's why people are investing so heavily into material and in our case into technical ceramics Okay?